If you're looking to invest in AI stocks, forget about NVIDIA. That was the first wave of the AI trade, the obvious one, semiconductors. NVIDIA has been the clear market leader from the beginning. That's why the stock is up 2,000% in three years. That one's played out. In 2025, we've seen the pick and shovel plays. It was nuclear, natural gas, a bunch of clean energy stocks. They made huge gains as investors placed their bets on what would power these colossal data centers. And while energy is crucial for wide-scale deployment of AI, there is another problem slowing development even more. Now, I haven't heard anyone else talking about this, but it is a concentrated bet on one of the most profound hardware transformations incurring in computing right now. So today what I'd like to do is share seven stocks that will benefit from the transition. I'm going to give you the names, details, and ticker symbols of each one. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. There's also a link in the description to sign up for my Black Ops trading service. It is just five bucks for the entire year. You'll get live weekly mentoring sessions with me, proprietary indicators, bonus reports, and a bunch more. It's the best five dollars you'll spend this year. So click the link or go to tradewithross.com to get signed up for that. Now, to fully comprehend this opportunity, we first need to understand how an AI data center rack works. Now, to put it simply, the storage server stores massive amounts of data that feeds the AI compute nodes. That's the GPUs that everybody buys from NVIDIA. This is where all the calculations are performed. Now, the power and cooling units there at the bottom are pretty self-explanatory. But our focus here, which is often overlooked, is the top-of-rack switch, or TOR. Now, the TOR switch manages data traffic between the storage server and the GPUs, as well as between the server racks. And with AI companies planning one gigawatt data centers, even with the best AI training GPUs, each data center will have more than 10,000 of these server racks. And that is why communication between and within these racks is crucial to maintaining efficiency and scaling effectively, which brings us to the copper wall. Now, the copper wall is the physical limit beyond which copper cables cannot transmit data fast enough over a given distance. So, as the signal frequency increases, as they push more data through it, the current density tends to concentrate near the surface rather than flow uniformly across the section. And this leads to higher resistance. It leads to signal loss. In other words, the faster they're transferring data, the shorter the distance it can do so. In the early 2010s, a standard passive copper cable could reliably transmit 10 gigabits per second up to 7 meters. But with exploding AI workflows, we are juicing it. We are now increasing those speeds to 112 gigabits per second. And traditional copper cables can only transmit at that speed up to 2 meters. The upcoming generation of servers will operate at twice this speed, 224 gigs per second. At which point the reach of passive copper cables drops to less than one meter. And this one meter limit is the copper wall. Now here's the problem. A standard data rack, as you can see in the photo, is roughly two meters tall. So if a switch at the top of the rack cannot reliably send a signal to a server at the bottom of the rack using passive copper, the traditional architecture fails. To scale AI clusters from thousands to hundreds of thousands of GPUs, the industry has no choice but to adopt optical internets for short-reach applications that were previously the exclusive domain of cheap passive copper. We had a transition from copper to these optics. And they're very different from traditional copper wires. These optical interconnects convert electrical signals into pulses of light sends them through a fiber optic cable, allowing it to carry massive amounts of data with no loss, with no distance limitation. So now they can move data faster and further, but even fiber optics have their limits. The massive training and interference load requirements mean that GPUs are improving at a breakneck pace. NVIDIA's latest Blackwell cluster requires switches that support 800 gigabyte per second ports which requires the underlying silicon to support 224 gigabit speed. The next generation of NVIDIA's chips is expected to double this speed. And as with any transition, it will not be a step change, but a gradual replacement 
of existing components. And here is how it is likely to play out over the next three to four years. For the rest of 2025 and into 2026, at current speeds of 224 gigs per second, passive copper cables are limited to less than one meter. Now, the simple solution here is what's called active electrical cables, AEC. They use a chip to boost the signal halfway along the cable. That extends the reach back to 2 to 3 meters. 2027 and 2028, as we move to 1.6 terabit speeds, 14 times the current, even the AECs become too thick and inefficient. The only solution here is to use linear drive optics, LPOs. And these use the GPU itself to handle signal processing. But beyond that, 2029 and onward, with speeds I can't even fathom today, the final step would be co-packaged optics, in which the signal is converted to an optical signal directly on the chip. It achieves near-perfect transmission with almost zero electrical resistance losses, but it requires a complete redesign of the entire server manufacturing. Now, the bigger players have already started making moves to prepare for this shift. A few weeks back, Marvell Technology announced the acquisition of Celestial AI for $3.25 billion. Celestial is at the forefront of developing optical interconnect platforms. Even NVIDIA is there trying to fuse compute with NVLink, NVSwitch, and networking silicon to keep traffic inside its famed walled garden. Companies like Corning, best known for the Gorilla Glass it puts in iPhones, is gaining momentum in optical communications as AI computing is exploding. Analysts expect a 39% year-over-year growth for Corning's optical communications segment, which provides these high-speed fiber connections for data centers. And while traditional mega caps such as NVIDIA, Broadcom, Intel, etc. have some exposure here, the best way to capture the upside will be to build a basket of optics companies that will drive this change over the next five years. And there are seven stocks that stand to benefit from this technological shift. And I've put them into three segments. Segment one, analog and optical core. Now this is where I would focus today. Here we are taking a bet on the eventual transition to these LPOs. And the companies doing so, Maycom Technology Solutions, ticker symbol MTSI. As this transition takes place, Maycom's high-performing analog chips could become the most critical components in the supply chain because they possess a rare high-barrier analog pedigree that digital-first competitors lack. Their 30% revenue growth is primarily driven by data center demand, and they are uniquely positioned to profit, whether the industry sticks with pluggables, the LPOs, or moves to these custom optical engines. Another company here is Fabronet, ticker FN. Now, the beauty of Fabronet is that they do not take any technology risk. They're not developing anything. They just execute the manufacturing for the winners. They're the primary manufacturer for NVIDIA's complex optical interconnects and a key partner for Lumentum and Coherent. This company is an inevitable beneficiary of volume growth. And then we have Coherent, ticker COHR. Coherent manufactures its own indium phosphide lasers and modulators. It gives them a, a gross margin advantage as speeds ramp up to this anticipated 1.6 terabytes. So while LPO threatens these DSP makers, it benefits the module makers like Coherent, which can differentiate themselves through superior optics. So that's segment one. Segment two, the next wave, are the infrastructure architects. So as this LPO adoption ramps up, which we talked about earlier, we want to capture the upside from the network's architecture. And there's two companies uniquely positioned to do that. One is Arista Networks, ticker A-N-E-T. Now, LPO technology cannot work without a switch designed to support it. And Arista has been the most vocal champion of Etherlink and LPO-capable switching. By actively validating these LPO modules on their switches, they are de-risking the ecosystem. Next is Marvell Technology, ticker MRVL, and Marvell is a bit of a safety hedge. They dominate the DSP market that LPO tries to disrupt. They're also aggressively pivoting to CPO with that acquisition of Celestial AI and the development of those new 1.6 terabit Nova optical engines. So they are effectively hedging themselves. If DSP stay, Marvell wins. If CPO arrives, Marvell's silicon photonics platform wins. So they have some skin in both sides of the game. 
and in segment three are the moonshots. These are the highest risk plays. These last two stocks are likely to either win big or fail big. Either it becomes the industry standard and the stock runs tenfold or it drifts into obscurity over the next three to five years. And these are the two companies. Number one, Poet Technologies, ticker P-O-E-T. Now, their optical interposer platform, which I barely understand, enables chip assembly using standard automated equipment, eliminating the need for expensive active alignment processes. Now, the company has successfully pivoted from R&D to commercial operations, recently securing $150 million to drive production of 800 gig and 1.6 terabit engines. So they're on the cutting edge. The other one, Lightwave Logic, ticker LWLG. Now, this is essentially a pure play on material science. As silicon modulators lose efficiency beyond that 200 gig per lane, Lightwave offers a solution. They use proprietary electro-optic polymers, and these materials allow for faster switching at much lower power levels, therefore bypassing the current physical limitations. So here's the full list of those seven stocks with tickers. Now, what about the risks? Well, there are a couple to be aware of. And the biggest risk, in my opinion, is a slowdown in CapEx or capital expenditures. If AI momentum does not materialize as quickly as expected, even a 10% cut in CapEx could cause a 30 to 50% drop in some of these optical stocks. These companies have highly leveraged operations due to their high debt loads. The other big one is geopolitics. Now, as we learned at the beginning of 2025, a disruption to trade with our international partners can have nasty impacts on stocks. Optical assembly is highly concentrated in Thailand and China. The latter, of course, the Trump administration has an ongoing love-hate relationship with. So another trade war could crush margins for some of these companies. But from my perspective, the transition from copper to optics isn't a question of if but when. These stocks are a bet on that inevitability. Now, if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel for more and click the link below to sign up for my $5 YouTube special for an entire year of my Black Ops trading service.